Okay, so today I'm going to start uh, talking about how do we count atoms of really, really small things. So to kind of get you thinking about this, you know, it's easy when objects being counted are not too small and there's not too many of them, right? But what about counting grains of sand along the stretch of beach or the stars in the nighttime sky? Uh, then things get difficult. Okay, counting those objects would be really time consuming and tedious and, and very hard to do. So usually when we count out large numbers of small things, we tend to use a unit or a counting unit. Like for eggs, we use a dozen of eggs or peaches or apples, a bushel, um, paper with, with reams. Um, so like reams of paper. So if you don't know what a ream is, that's 500 sheets of paper. Popcorn size, you don't walk into a movie theater and say, oh yeah, I'll take the 500 kernel bag. You know, who wants to count out 500 popcorn kernels. Instead, we just use sizes of containers. Um, and so I'm sure you can think of some other counting units that you may use in everyday life. So one unit that we use to count atoms is a mole, okay? Not the furry little creature. Um, I'm talking about the mole where, um, like, it's M-O, the, the unit is M-O-L. Uh, so what is a mole? It's the amount of a substance that contains as many particles as there are atoms and exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. So if I'm looking at the carbon isotope, we like carbon-12 as the isotope, right? Six protons, six neutrons. I weigh out 12 grams. That amount is equivalent to a mole. So we kind of, um, you know, th that's kind of our standard. So on the periodic table, we have the, the molar mass listed in the upper right hand corner and it's it, it's the pink number. So when I look at carbon, uh, it says 12.01. Now remember, carbon has three different isotopes, carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. And so um, like 99% of carbon is uh, carbon 12. So that's why we got that little 0 0.01 to account for the carbon 13 and the carbon 14. Um, but 12, so if I so if I have graphite, you know, which is carbon, and I weigh out 12.01 grams of, of carbon, I have a mole of carbon. Copper, okay, the molar mass of copper is 63.55 grams. So if I weigh out 63.55 grams on the scale of, of copper, maybe copper wire, I have a mole of copper. Now, what exactly uh, is a mole? Like, what is, okay, fine, you got a mole of copper, you got a mole of carbon, okay. Just hang on to that question. Another unit or number that you need to be aware of is Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That is the number of particles in exactly one mole of a pure substance. So going back to a mole of carbon, well, if I asked you, how, well, how many particles would you have in a mole of carbon, you would say 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is a really, really big number. I mean, I, I took the liberty of putting it into um, standard notation, taking it out of scientific notation. So carbon, 12.01 grams of carbon is one mole of carbon, which means I would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. Or copper, 63.55 grams of copper is one mole of copper, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms. Okay, so what if I had 24.02 um, grams of copper? Well, that's basically double this. So that means I would have two moles of carbon and then whatever Avogadro's number is times two, that's how many atoms I would have. So to give you a perspective as to how big Avogadro's number is, I mean, I, I wrote it in standard notation for you here, but this number is really, really big. I mean, if I ha measured out a mole of popcorn kernels, I would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd kernels, or a mole of gumballs, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd gumballs. And, you know, FYI, if, if I t had a mole of popcorn kernels, you know, you could cover the U.S. 310 miles high. Or if you were to distribute one mole of dollars evenly among the population of the world, everyone would receive that amount of money. One times 10 to the 14 dollars. That'd be nice. Actually, no, inflation would skyrocket. Okay, anyways, so that 12.01 uh, grams of carbon, that 63.55 grams of copper, those numbers are called the molar mass of those elements. So the molar mass has a unit grams um, per mole. The mass of one mole of a pure substance equals or is numer numerically equal to uh, the atomic mass. So an element's molar mass can be used if it were a conversion factor. So for example, if I had um, 
Oh, geez. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pick a number. Let's say I have 30 grams of copper. Uh, carbon. Wow. And I want to get to moles. So I have 30 grams of copper. I want to get to moles. I'm going to break out the pen. Oh, I was thinking. Okay. Um, I'm going to put the molar mass down here. Okay, so I'm in grams of copper and I want to go to moles. Well, I'm going to put one mole of the element on top. And then the molar mass of that element on the bottom. And looking at the periodic table, the molar mass of carbon is 12.01. And then I just punch this into my calculator. 30 um, times 1 divided by 12.01 is, okay, I definitely did that wrong. 30 divided by 12.01, uh, 2.49. moles of copper. Wow. 2.49. Um, now, of course, if I was doing sig figs, I'd, I'd probably just go to one sig fig here, but I'm just going to add this zero here so it's so it works. Okay, what if um, I had five moles of copper. Ugh, why do I keep saying copper? Of carbon. And I wanted to go to um, mass, all right? So I set it up, I put one mole of your element on the bottom, and, and then you put the molar mass of carbon. Looking at the periodic table, the molar mass of carbon is 12.01. So then I would just go 12.01 times five. And I get 60.05. And just for simplicity sake, I'm just going to st stick a point zero there, so it's a little bit more. So then my answer would just be 60 points grams of carbon. Okay, so i got a whole bunch of examples here. How many grams of helium in two moles? So you're going to start with what you're given. I'm going to see if I can. Two moles of helium. And I'm going to set it up. I'm in moles, so that one mole is going to go on the bottom. And then the molar mass of helium, looking at the periodic table, is 4.00 grams per mole. Okay, so 2.00 times 4.00. Why did I do that? I don't know. But it's 8s. <laughs> That's a really messed up eight. And according to SIGs, uh, we're going to go to three. And my unit is grams of HE. Okay, how many grams of copper in 3.5 grams of... Wow, I can't talk. In 3.5 moles of copper. Okay, so I start with what you're given. 3.0 moles of copper. And then we're going to set up that conversion factor. I'm in moles, so that one mole goes on the bottom. And then the molar mass of copper, and at the periodic table, 63.55. Is that what I had on the other side? Yeah. Okay, 63.55. And the moles will cancel out. I'm going to be left with grams of copper. So 3.5 times 63.55. I get a really big number here. 222.425. And then we look at sigs. I got three sig figs. So really, and I'm just going to go back to this. My answer is going to be... 222 grams of copper. All right, what is the mass in grams for the following? So I have 2.05 moles of sulfur. And I'm going to set up my conversion factor. Um, oops. One mole of sulfur is going to go on the bottom. 
And then the molar mass of sulfur is 32.06. So I'm going to go 2.5 times 32.06, and I get 80.5. The then we got SIGs, so we're going to go to 3. So it'll be 80.2 grams of sulfur. All right, 1.8 moles calcium. figure out how many grams of it so one mole of cal uh, calcium will go on the bottom and then I think it's 40.08 grams in one mole according to periodic table and my calcium wrap. so now I'm do the math 1.8 times 40.08 and I get 72.5 one four four and then we got three sigs so really it's 72.1 grams Ugh. okay this time let's go the other way grams to moles how many moles in 11.9 grams of aluminum or aluminum so I'm gonna start with what I'm given I'm gonna set up my conversion factor um, I'm in grams, so that means the molar mass is going to go on the bottom. So the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 according to the periodic table. And that is equivalent to one mole of aluminum. Okay. So 11.9 times 1 divided by 26.98. I get... I'm just going to switch back so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, 0 0.441 0, 06. Okay. Um, three sig figs. So I don't need to round. So I can keep it. And then my answer is moles of aluminum. How many moles and 50 grams of carbon? So I start with what I'm given 50 grams of carbon. I'm going to set up my conversion factor. Uh, the molar mass of carbon, according to the periodic table, is 12.01 grams. And that is equivalent to one mole of carbon. I'm going to take my pen out here. All right, then we just do the math. 50 divided by 12.01, uh, 4.13. Sorry, 4.16. Three, one. Okay. Sig figs, we're going to go to three. So 4.16 moles of carbon. Calculate the number of moles for the following. All right. So I start with what you're given 935 grams of AU. I'm going to stick this over here. Um, the molar mass of gold is 197 if I'm not mistaken. My door is closed. I'm pretty sure it's 197. And it's one mole of AU. I'm gonna double check. Yep, I was right. 197. Okay, get my pen here. Okay, and we punch it in our calculator. 935 divided by 197. 4.746. And then we gotta go to three sig figs. So one, two, three. Yep, I can round. So I'm gonna go seven, five moles of AU. So I hope you caught that, how I rounded. 352 grams of Fe, set up the conversion. Um, molar mass of, of iron is 55.85. Yep. And that is equivalent to one mole of Fe. All right, let me do the math. 
352 divided by 55.85. 6.302. So I'm going to stop right after the 0, 3 sig figs. And the answer is moles of iron. Okay, um, that's it for notes. Now, on the assignment, um, go ahead and pause this video and then open up the assignment. And I'm, I'm going to grr, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I'll find the assignment. I'm actually going to flash you the answers. Okay, so this first half is not in our notes. Uh, it says you are to find the molecular weights of the following compounds. So make sure you show your work. So you are given NaOH. Okay, I'm going to make a new slide here. NaOH. So what you do is you have Na. Okay, actually, I don't like the way I'm doing this. Do this. So Na, you have one of them, and the molar mass of sodium, according to the periodic table, is 22.99. Um, oxygen, you have one of them, and the molar mass of oxygen, according to the periodic table, is 15.99, or 16. And then we have hydrogen, and you have one of them, and the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01. .01. So then what you do is um, you multiply these numbers, and then you add them all up. So 1 times 22.99 plus 1 times 15.99 plus um, 1 point, 1 times 1.01. .01. So I'm going to do that, 22.99 plus 15.99 plus 1.01. .01. Uh, and I get 39, 39.99 grams per moles. So that would be your answer for number one. Um, I'm going to take a look at number six here. Look again, I'm flashing answers, NH2SO4. Okay. Of them, that's all four. All right, give me a minute here to get this situated. Sorry that I didn't have this typed up already. Okay. Yep. All right. So to do that, wow. This two, okay. It's going to go to like everything inside the parentheses. Okay, so I have N, but I have two of them. And the molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01. And then this 2 goes to the H, um, but I have four H's. There's two sets of them, so 2 times 4 is 8. So for H, I have 8 of them at one point. Zero, 01. And then I have sulfur. I have one of them at 30, what is it, 32.06? Yep. Oh my god, that looks terrible. And then oxygen, I have four of them at 15.99. So now I'm going to punch this into my calculator. 14.01 times 2 plus parenthesis 8 times 1.01 .01 plus 32.06 plus parenthesis 4 times 15.99. I get 132. 0.12 grams per mole. Okay. So that's how you do the front half. And then after that, it's uh, I give you examples and you should be good to go. But bring your questions if you have them. All right, thank you.